is Dawn. I'm the Ginger Cat Stitcher here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I want to thank all the people that have subscribed to my channel and have left comments. Thank you so much. It means so much to me and it gives me the encouragement to keep on going. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, so today I'm going to do a tutorial on how I finished uh, this adorable pattern. And it's called Irish Chain Quilted Salt Box. And I got this off of Etsy. And the pattern designer is the French Giraffe. I will leave her link down below. But oh, I just she has a whole series of them and I just fell in love with them. So this is how I finished it. So I found this picture frame at Walmart. And I thought it looked like... I thought it looked like a picket fence. So I thought, oh, that's going to be perfect because it'll mimic the fence in the pattern. And since it was a quilt, I thought, oh, I'm going to make a little mini quilt and then hang it on my frame. So this is what I'm going to show you how to make today. And it's just attached with a magnet. And I stitched a little washer on the back there so that it can just hang and sit on any surface. So let's get started. I'll show you how I made it. This is the frame that we will be using. I got it at Walmart. Here is the back. I will put a link down below so that you can order it online if you want. I found this in Walmart in the craft section with the unfinished wood items. So, um, first thing that we're going to do is we'll take the, this part off and we'll save that for later. Take that out and then this is just a piece of plexiglass. Alright, so now I'm going to stain it. I'm using the Waverly Antiquing Wax just simply because this is what I have. And we're just going to pour some of that into here. And then I wanted to water it down a little bit so it goes on a little thinner. Just mix that up. All right, I think we'll try that for right now. Okay, and then I'm going to start on the back just to kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like right there. So I take my, I think this is an old sock. All right, let's see how it's going to go on. Oh yeah, I like that. So we're just going to rub this on. So if you want yours darker, you can, you know, keep adding a little bit of the paint or the antiquing wax. Got some dripping, so I'm just going to Mix that in a little bit. All right, let's move on to the front. Let's be brave. We'll start here since this part is going to be hidden. We'll just test it out. Yeah, I actually like that color right off the bat. Well, that's lucky. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and rub down our frame. Oh, things got a little different over here. So this wood is different than this wood. That's going to make things a little, a little interesting. But let's give it a try here. All right, it's just soaking up more. That's okay. I still like it. We're just going to it's just going to use more than I anticipated, which is just fine. It's off camera there a little bit. There we go. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and finish staining this. I like it. 
kind of makes it look even more like a fence. Yeah, I'm liking it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stain this up, and then I will be right back. So as I've been going along staining this, I've switched from my sock to a sponge brush, and I'm liking the coverage better, and I'm able to get into this crack here a little bit, the edge, um, with this raised part. So it just seems to be covering better, so I would recommend the sponge brush over the sock as your application, but then I take the sock and I wipe it back down a little bit. There, and that's getting a little bit better coverage getting into all of these like little can't no can't tell if you see but it's really rough textured wood and this is getting better coverage into the cracks so I'm gonna keep going and finish getting this stained all right got it all stained up I'm really liking the way that the stain or antiquing wax really made the wood look more rough and like a fence. There's a couple spots that I think had glue or something and my stain antiquing wax didn't stick but that's okay because our quilt is going to cover this part so that's just fine and don't forget to do your tops and bottoms and that's it for staining it. We're going to go ahead and set this aside now to dry and we'll move on to the fun part of making the quilt. Okay, now it's time to make the quilt out of our cross-stitched piece. Um, let me first tell you that I am I'm not a quilter. Um, I never made um, any kind of patchwork quilt or anything before. I am working on learning how to do uh, hexes, and I'm working on putting together a hexi quilt, but like even these pieces that you see here, um, I, I purchased those. So no, I've never made a quilt. So all you quilters out there, I'm sure I'm gonna make a mistake or do things the hard way. Um, please let me know if you have any tips for me. I would love to love to hear them. So let's go ahead then, and on that note, get started with how I would do the little miniature quilt here that we're making. Okay. Okay. So again, I'm using the friction pen. I love these because you can draw on your fabric and then a little bit of heat from the iron and then the marking goes away. So I have already drawn a one inch border from the edge of my stitching out. So I marked it at one inch and I drew around it. So that gives us an inch here and now for the scary part, it's time to cut out the stitching. If you want to seal the edge of your fabric with a zigzag or with um, a little bit of fray check or serge it, anything like that, you can. But uh, we're going to end up cutting away that part anyways, and it's going to be safely sealed inside of the stitches so it won't come unraveled. But this is always the, the scary part is cutting out your stitching. At least for me it is, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a chicken. But it doesn't have to be super exact here, at least for me. And I'm cutting it just outside of the one inch border. Just so I kind of have that visual there. And I stitched this on 14 count Ada. So my design is approximately four inches by four inches. And it could be different for you depending on what you stitched it on. There we go. There's our cute little house and quilt. 
Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit better on that. Now we have to pick our fabrics. This is what I chose. I just went through my scrap basket. So I'm sorry I don't have the names of these fabrics for you. I just dug through my scrap basket. So I thought that looked good next to that. And then I have this blue here that has red and the white. So I thought that looks good next to that. So you'll need to choose an inner border fabric and an outer border fabric. And then you'll need to choose something for the background. This is just, I think this piece is from Hobby Lobby and I just coffee dyed it. This isn't anything special. It's just really cute little tan with um, some polka dots that I coffee dyed. So that's gonna be the back of my quilt. And then I'm gonna make it so that the it's also the binding. It's gonna come around onto the front for the binding. So three pieces of fabric. And then you are gonna cut your inner border and your outer border. And these measurements will be in the description below. But on the sides, we see we have a square here and we need to make it a little uh, longer vertically than horizontally. So the two sides are going to be three fourths of an inch. And the two tops are going to be a one inch strip. We'll give it just a little bit more room between the motif and the strip on the top and the bottom to help us elongate this. Now, you're probably looking at these strips and wondering. I tore mine. Um, I don't know if I necessarily recommend that method. If you are handy at using a rotary cutter and a mat, uh, by all means, go ahead. I have this irrational fear of them. I don't know. Uh, for the longest try at time, I tried to use them, and I could never get them to work. Uh, reason being I found out is because I'm left-handed, and the rotary cutter I was using was for right-handed people. So that was part of the problem. So I have since learned that you can buy one for left-handed people, and I have purchased one. And... I I don't know. I'm still not very good at them. So I always tear. And in this case, these pieces are so small that maybe my tearing wasn't the best idea. But we're going to go for it. And uh, so by all means, if you are comfortable with a rotary cutter, please use that. I think that'll come out better. So that'll be our inner border. Then our outer border again, of course, is going to be longer on or wider sorry on the top and the bottom than it is on the sides so that's what we're looking to come out with for this strip i mean this step so now it's time to sew what i'm going to do is we are gonna sew these like this, but I'm gonna mark a line on my pattern here so that I can kind of use it as a stitching guide. So we're gonna go the ruler right at the edge of the stitch, and we're gonna go in a quarter inch. So it's about right there. And then, down here, we're going to go half an inch. So the sides are a quarter inch, the top and the bottom are an inch. Sorry, half an inch. And this is just so that I have 
some sort of visual to help me keep my stitching straight on the sewing machine. Well, if you draw it straight. Ah! So we're just going to come around. There we go. So this will be just to visually help me. So I can line up like that. And all of my seams are going to be about an eighth, about an eighth inch seam. So we're going to stitch right down here. And then this will fold out like that. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and get these stitched down. And I will be right back. I got one side sewn and I wanted to show you why I did this inner line. It's because I use it as a guide when I'm sewing my strips. I kept it lined right up onto that line that I marked and it just helped me keep my strip straight uh, on Ada. It's going to be really important that I keep my strips straight because you can you know definitely see the horizontal and vertical grid on this so that helped me keep my fabric strip nice and straight and i think that's a good distance about two squares away from the main from the stitching so all right so i'm gonna go finish up these strips and i'll be right back and there we are with the four inner borders sewn on there. And I'm really glad that I did make the inner guideline because it took me three times to get this top piece sewn on there straight, or at least somewhat visually straight that it's not gonna drive me nuts. So there we go, that's inner border. Now let's go on and put the outer one. There, I've got my two side strips sewn on, and oh, I think it's looking so good. I'm excited. I love my fabric choices. I think it's looking really good. So I just sewed those on and then finger pressed it open. The first inner one, I did the sides first and then the top. The outer one, I'm doing the sides first and then the, the top and the bottom. I'm thinking if I had it to do over again, you know, maybe I could, you know, this be on the bottom, that's on the top, and then so this one on the top of that one, and then this one on the top. So depending on the order in which you sew your strips on, you would make a different pattern around. So that's for the next one. But I, I'm really liking this one, uh, the way that it's turning out so far. All right, now to sew on top and bottom. I'm back. I thought I would show you how I'm laying this out because I was thinking, well, if you've never made one before either, you might be wondering how do I lay it out? So I just am putting this on a top like that. And then I'm just going to sew from here to here using my eighth inch seam allowance. And then that will give us the top piece. And then I'll do the same with the bottom. Okay, now I will be right back. Here we have it. Top and bottom is sewn on and I have to say I'm so happy with it. Um, honestly, sometimes things that I think of in my head don't work out when I try them, but this one is working out the way that I envisioned it. So I'm very happy with it. Now I need to square it all off because we're going to need to put our backing on and fold it over to make our binding. So I decided I'm going to be brave and we're going to do this. I think this will be the easiest way to get it straight. So 
like I said, if you are a quilter and you have some tips, I would love to hear them <laughs> because whew, I know I could use it. So I'm going to be slow and take my time and I'm going to line it up on the edge of this strip right here. That was, ha, hold my breath. Okay. Looks good. I just am always afraid that I'm going to, like, go in and chop it off at the wrong place or something. I don't know. That's what would always happen to me when I was using the right-handed blade in my left hand. So, here we go. Hold your breath. And... There we go. Well, look at that. I wonder if it's even close to the original measurements that I thought we needed to have it at. Oh my gosh. Six and a half. Uh, eight and a quarter. We're close. We're real close. Yay. <laughs> it's also a fun time when things actually come out the size that they're supposed to be. Yay. So, uh, now we're going to do our backing. And let me go ahead and get that together. And I'll meet you right back here. All right. I wanted to show you how I came up with these measurements. Let's get this over here a little bit better. So, to do our backing piece, I measured this. And we are at six and a half inches wide. And then I want a half an inch overlap on each side. So that would be adding an additional inch. So that means we need to cut the backing seven and a half inches wide. Then I measured this way and we are right at eight inches. And I need to have half an inch on either side. So that would be an extra inch. So that would be nine inches wide. So we are going to cut our backing seven and a half inches by nine inches. So let me go ahead and get the backing piece and get that down. All right. So this is approximately, I'm just going to square it up here. Pretty good. Okay. Looks like this one might be a little off in this direction. So we'll put it like that. That's what I'm always afraid of. I won't see that because it'll be folded in. Okay, looking good. Look squared, except for that little bite out of the bottom, but I think we'll be okay. Then we'll put this in the middle. And the way that we're going to do our binding is a little crooked there so yeah see I took that off uh but it'll be okay we're gonna fold this in about a quarter inch and press it and then we're gonna fold it up again over the edge the other quarter inch so that takes up the half inch that we had to spare and that's gonna be our binding 
it's a little bit thin and I want it to have a little more of a quilt like texture. So I have just a piece of cheap 25 cents at Hobby Lobby craft felt. This might be a little thick. So hang on, I'm gonna go dig through my basket and see what I can find. I'll be right back. I tried several things, including this, uh, this I thought might work, this piece of uh, muslin or old tea towel. And I felt like that had kind of a nice feel to it, but maybe needed to be a little bit quick, uh, excuse me, a little thicker. So in the end, I did decide to go with the cheap piece of craft felt. This kind of gives it a nice thick feeling and I feel like I can hand quilt through that nicely. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I wouldn't advise anything thicker. Let me show you how thick. I don't want anything thicker than that. It would be too thick for such a small little quilt. So that's what we're gonna go with. So let me get this cut. We're going to cut it the same size as this piece. So that's six and a half by eight. All right, Dawn, you're gonna be brave. I'm gonna do this. All right, so six and a half. Puts us right there. Six and a half, make sure all the corners are lined up. Six and a half. Six and a half. Here we go. By nine. Whew, that was lucky. <laughs> I didn't even stop to measure that direction. There we go. Let's put this on. And I remember I added that extra, so we did have an inch to play with there. Okay, and now this direction, we needed it to measure eight inches. So again, we'll make sure it's straight. That on there. Move that up so you can see. Eight inches by six and a half, which should fit this on there nicely. Say that's pretty good. Okay, now at this point, I want to run some hand quilting around here. So let me go get those supplies and I'll be right back. All right, let's get set up to do the hand quilting. I'm going to go ahead and safety pin. my top batting, top and batting to the backing. An effort to keep that from shifting all around. And I just have some quilting thread. I'm going to use my needle. Put a knot in the end. Very well. 
I'm going to come up through my quilt right here in the corner. Like this. And then I'm just going to go up and down. Most primitive quilt stitches. Whoops. And there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around between the red and the blue. And then I will meet you back here after I get all the way around. There we go. I got all the way around and then I decided to do a second uh, running stitch around the cross stitch piece. And I have to say, if you're going to do this, like if you're going to do yours like this, do this one first and then this one. I had to slide my needle between my layers of fabric to do this one, but it worked out. It's fine. There's the back. So now I'm going to trim the batting here. It got a little wonky. So we're going to trim that up. We're going to go over to the ironing board and press in our fabric to create the binding that's going to come around to the front but it's got a nice nice feel to it i think it's coming along nicely so off to the ironing board all right we're getting closer and closer to a finished little mini quilt so as you can see i trimmed the batting to be even with the quilt top I've taken the iron and I've pressed over about a quarter inch to meet the, the binding, or sorry, so that the binding meets the edge of the quilt. And then that will be folded over like that and then stitched down. So that's why I wasn't too worried about that area where my rotary cutter, which where is it? My rotary cutter got it a little, there we go took that little bite out of it because it gets folded in and then folded over just like that. So now we need our needle and thread again and we're going to hand stitch this down. Before we get stitching this down I wanted to show you how we're going to miter the corners. Excuse my fingernails there stained from doing the frame. All right, so when you fold this over and press it that way, fold this over and press it that way, we get left with this little mark here, and that's what we need to cut off in order to make a nice mitered corner. So we're gonna cut like that. Let's do another one. Maybe you can see a little bit better. So we're going to cut from crease mark to crease mark. And this is what's going to help us make those nice mitered corners. Oh, kind of difficult to hold here. So from crease mark crease mark. 
So basically just cutting that little point off. Okay, now I've got my needle. not at the end of my thread. I'm going to start in the middle of the side and I'm going to bury my knot in the batting. And I'm going to slide my needle right here. So I'm going between the two pieces of fabric just coming out where I pressed that crease. Now we can fold it over. And let's see, let's lower this so that I can hold it a little bit better. Let's see, let me figure out which way I'm gonna stitch it here. All right, since I am left-handed, ooh, you know what I need? I'll be right back. Let me go get my little binding clips. Hang on a second. I'm back. Look. See, these are useful. I got them for doing um, rug hooking, doing the binding on rugs, as well as holding hexes. So, like I said, I was learning how to do that. Look at that. It's always amazing when you use the right tools for the job, isn't it? Like I got myself a thinner needle. <laughs> All right, we're cooking now. So I'm just gonna take a little bite down here and come up right next to the binding and then a little bite through the binding. Well, maybe. Bite through the binding. Get a little closer. Again, I'm probably not the one to show you how to do this because this is my first time doing it. I've watched a lot of videos. There we go. And then you come down right here. And you go up through binding. Just a nice view of my hand. <laughs> so again, you're just coming out of your binding down into your quilt, taking just a little bite out of it with your needle, coming back up and into this binding and then out of the binding. Basically, just little tacking stitches to tack that down. And then we're going to go all the way around. So I'm going to stitch. And then I'll be back when I get to the corner here to show you how to do the corner. Okay, so I've stitched down to here. Now we're at that corner. You just need to fiddle with it a little bit to get the sides down in and you want the two pieces to come together and make a nice point. I'm not quite happy with how that is so I'm going to slide the middle of it down just a little bit more. the way that goes together a little bit better. So I'm going to take, get out of the sun, a little bite out of this. I'm going to come up right here, fold this over, make sure the blue is tucked into it. I'm going to come over here and take 
just a little bite out of that. Pull them together. Now I'm gonna do a ladder stitch up this joint here. So I'm gonna go through that side, come over here, take a little bite through that, pull it together. Get down even a little bit closer for you. So you come through the side, which is essentially making the leg of the ladder. And then you go across to the other side, which is making the step, the rung. And then you pull it through like a little leg. And then when you tug, it all goes together. And then we're gonna come down through here and we're gonna go all the way back through that corner, back out to the edge. Flatten it out. And now we're able to continue sewing up this way. So I have been stitching along, came around my second corner, all the way down this side and I'm to my third corner. And I thought I would show you again uh, how I do the corner. So I have this folded under, this folded under, and you kind of have to fiddle with this fabric here, folded under this a little bit, just to get a nice clean uh, join there. So then I'm gonna come over here Take a little tiny bite out of that side. And then this is the ladder stitch. So that's my first rung. And then the little stitch that goes up through that crease there, that is a leg, a side of the ladder. Now I'm over on this side and I go through just a little bit, make a teeny tiny leg pull that through and now I have another rung and then I'm going to come back over onto this side and go through the fabric just in that crease to create another side of the ladder there now I have three rungs I'm going to come back onto this side and do the side of the ladder there up to the point. And now I have four rungs and then the sides of the ladder are hidden in there. And the neat thing about the ladder stitch is then when you pull it, it all just goes together and hides everything. So now I got this little bit here So I'm just gonna insert it, insert my needle right, well, maybe there and travel in between the layers of fabric and come out right there at the base. Oops, pulled too hard. There we go. And now I'm just gonna continue stitching across this side. So that's how I do the mitered corners. All right, I'm gonna continue stitching. I've just really been enjoying this slow, methodical stitching of stitching on the border. All right, I'll be back in a couple minutes. And there we are, she's all sewn up. Perfectly imperfect. Pretty happy with the way she came out. I think it looks great. So the next thing that we need to do is attach a washer or I think this is a nut. So anything small and metallic to the back so that we can attach it to our magnet. So 
Let's bring you on in down here. I'm gonna find the middle. Just kind of crease it just a little bit. So I know where the middle is. And I don't want this to be permanent because maybe down the road I'd like to do something else. So I'm just gonna do a little stitch through there and tie it. So this way I have the option um, if I you know decide I want my quilt to you know be displayed in a different way. All I have to do is to cut these little threads and take the washer off of there. And I don't risk getting it, you know, stained with the glue or anything like that. And then we're going to do the same on this side. Just take a little stitch through. I'm not going through to the front. I'm just taking a little bit out of the back and through the batting. Now I'll tie this on there. Back it up a little bit. Oh my goodness. Make this into a knot. And then let's cut these strings so that they don't hang over the top. I don't want to see those. That one might be a little long. There we go. Make sure that that's not going to show across the top. Let's bring in our finished frame. So uh, stained this earlier. I glued a magnet up there with some E6000. There's our quilt. There we go. All finished. Oh, I think that looks so cute. And I love the way that the frame mimics the picket fence. So there you go. That's how you can make your own finish for any kind of cross stitch that has a quilt pattern or more specifically, these adorable little quilt and salt box house cross stitch patterns. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.